Salut Civ fan, welcome back to another Civilization 6 video. Today we will dive into the game mod Industries and Corporations. This mod was released early 2021 as part of the New Frontier Season Pass. I enjoy it very much and in my opinion it adds an interesting game layer and new goals to synergize with your selected victory pass. After having played several games with this mod, I feel that I can share with you my learnings and numerous tips that will benefit you in your future Civ 6 games. We will first tackle the industries, followed by the corporations. Please note that I will not address the monopolies in this video guide as I think it belongs to its own category. Monopolies would be another topic for another video. I hope you will find this guide useful. Please share, like and subscribe for more videos. I appreciate the support. Now, let's get straight to the video. The industry. So what are the requirements in order to build an industry? You have two main requirements. One is to unlock the technology, which is currency. Money. If it Here, does not bring we... you happiness, will at least help you be miserable in comfort. <laughs> Thank you. So here, with the currency, as you can see, you have, as usual, the market and the commercial hub. And the new uh, item is industry. So with this industry, you will gain plus two food, plus two production, and plus one gold, as well as a great merchant point. And, and that's very important, that great merchant point, as part of the overall industry and corporation mod. Now, you need that technology, one. And two, you need to have two improved resources of the same coin. So, for example, here I have dyes and dyes. I have ivory and ivory. I might get jade and jade. And for the sake of this example, I will use it to show you something. And here, for example, I could get the amber. I would need two of a kind. Now, once you have two of a kind and you have unlocked the currency for the industry, you can then build an industry. What you need to know in terms of the limitations to build an industry. There are two main limitations. You can only build one industry per city. So for example, in Aretium, if I build here the industry of ivory, I would not be able to build the industry of dyes. A second limitation is that you cannot have more than one industry per type across your empire. So if ever I had another ivory somewhere, for example, when I conquer Quito, I would get another ivory here. And if I would have built either in Arisium or in Popayan one industry of ivory, I would not be able to build another industry of ivory in Quito. So only one industry per city, and only one industry per type of luxury resource. That are the limitations. So what we gain from an industry? As mentioned, we gain two food, two prod, one gold, and a great merchant point, which pays off a lot when you have, say, four cities and four industries, you get four great merchant points per turn very early in the game. That will help a lot for the future corporations. Now, in addition to this, you gain an additional effect. This additional effect depends on the luxury resource. You can gain some bonuses towards producing military units. You can gain bonuses towards generating gold in the city. You can have other resources to increase the output of faith, increase the output of culture, and other bonuses are for uh, population growth and housing or science. There are only three for science, which is mercury, tea, and turtles. And then we have some that are in order to produce buildings faster in the city or civilian units faster in that city. So depending on the uh, bonuses you want to gain in a city, you need to build different industries. For example, in Aresium, 
if I would build here an industry for the dyes or an industry for ivory, I would not gain the same bonus. Now, I would like to show you that here it's proposing me to build an industry for Arithium. Okay, that's one important tip. If I would like to not build a dyes industry in Arithium, but I would like to build the ivory bonus because I want to produce military units faster because that's where I would build an encampment. It's just front of the capital of my enemy at the moment here. And then what I could do is I could swap the dyes tile from Arithium to Popayan. And then I can build the industry of dyes in Popayan. So it is very important when you colonize at first to have the luxury resources not ideally not within one tile of a city because then it cannot be shared. This ivory can only be for an industry for Popayan, for example, and same for that. While this dies, this dies or lower here close to Rome, I have this T, which is within two tiles of Rome and also within three tiles of Lugdum. Meaning that in the future, I can use this T to get a science boost to Lugdunum, which will be really great because there are numerous mountains. I can have some very good campus here or here. And I also have the Great Barrier Reef. So in the future, I would like Lugdunum to get an industry of T at some point in time in the game. If Rome had been one tile away or in a radius of one from the T, I would not be able to share the T of Rome to Lugdunum at some point in time in the coming era. So your colonization should also take into consideration the positioning of the luxury resources for you to be able to share the industries. Now let's build that industry of dyes and I'll show you another tip. Okay, so here we are. I have now my dyes resources with my builder ready to build my industry. This one will produce a bonus of face. Here I can have a pretty nice uh, holy site in Popayan. But then when I build this dyes industry in Popayan, I will not be able to build a dye industry anywhere else in my empire. And I will not be able to build any other industry in Popayan. Let's build it. Okay. Now I have built that industry in Popayan, right? Last turn. Say, if ever, I would like in the future in Popayan to build a different industry, an industry of jade to generate more gold or an industry of ivory to produce more troops. Then what I could do is, with a builder, remove the industry I have built in Popayan. And now, thanks to this, I could make uh, I could construct another dyes uh, industry somewhere else in the empire, and I could build a different industry in Popayan. So being able to remove an industry is very uh, interesting in the strategy. So you could spend, say, uh, classical era up to Renaissance, uh, producing more face, for example, and then switching to producing more gold or more... Uh, military units faster, depending on what you uh, desire to do. Another tip. For example, if in Popayan I would already develop this jade and Bologna would acquire the jade tile and improve the jade before me, I would have only one jade. What I would need to do in order to develop my jade would be to become the suzerain of Bologna. When I would become the suzerain of Bologna, Bologna would share with me the jade, and therefore I would have two jade in my empire, and I would therefore be able to build an industry of jade here in Popayan. And then if later on Bologna would not be anymore my vassal, I would still have the benefits of having built my industry of jade. The corporation. So what are the requirements in order to build a corporation? There are three requirements. The first requirement is to have researched economics. 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 
So economics, as usual, you have stock exchange to complete your uh, commercial hub building and you have Big Ben. Now the new addition is this corporation improvement. It generates a lot of production with plus 10, uh, plus for food and three gold. To be noted is that it's not in addition to the industry, it replaces the industry when you build the corporation. So that's, that's the requirement number one, unlock the technology economics. Requirement number two, in as much as uh, to build industries, you need two resources of a kind. For the corporation, you need three. And uh, lastly, a uh, third requirement is to already have an industry. You can only build a corporation where you have an industry. So here, for the sake of our example, I have here an industry of silk, as we can see there. That's the building of the industry. And with my great merchant, I will then be able to build a corporation here. Now, what are the limitations? The limitations to build a corporation are, so far in my assessment, limited to two only. One limitation is that you can only make per game one corporation per luxury resource type. So if someone would have already built a corporation of silk, I would not be allowed to build a corporation of silk. Okay, so that's one limitation. Limitation number two is obviously you need a great merchant. So to have multiple corporations, you will need a lot of great merchants. Okay, so here you can see it's highlighted. I can now craft my corporation uh, this will use the last, or the <laughs> one and only ability of uh, Zood again here. And uh, it will consume the great merchant for me to make the corporation. Then you can pick your name here. Okay, so of course it's some silk, huh? so it's, it's always with the silk word. But you have some cool names. Um, I'll show you a bit later when I have multiple uh, products, how it works. Cool, so now we have our silk corporation. So previously the industry was generating plus 20% yield. Now it added another 20%. It's doubling up the bonus effect in addition of the 10 production. Okay. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, then of course, uh, same as the first industry, first corporation, you gain a score points. Um, I uh, created recently a uh, a video guide on Erasco points. If you are interested, I'll, I'll leave the, the link in the description below and, and show it at the top right here. <laughs> so beside the gain in production, gold, food, and uh, the plus 20% additional uh, yield here in the culture, you will tell me that's very expensive for a great merchant. And that's because when you build a corporation in a city, you unlock a project in that city. A project for a product. This one, the steel corporation, create new product. So at that moment here, I do not have yet the stock exchange. So for the sake of the example, we go to purchase the stock exchange. And then, now I can make the silk product. Okay. If I had the stock exchange in another city, it would be able to go there. Okay. Now these different products, they work identically to the bonuses of the industry. Okay. And they can be produced as many times as you want. Let me show you how it looks once you have multiple products. Okay. So here we are a little bit later in the same game with Dido, where at that moment I then got four corporations, silk entire, spices in Utica, amber in this, and the ivory corporation in Embuila. As you can note is that in Embuila I have no support, no commercial hub, and I can still produce this new product, the ivory corporation product. If I'm doing that, it's because then once you have these products, you can move them around in cities. So 
you can export from your home cities where you had an industry. So say in Tyre, I had an industry of silk, right? Giving me a culture boost. Now, all my four corporations can create products that I can send to other cities. As long as they can be uh, stored in a stock exchange building or in a seaport building. So as you can see here, for example, in Tyre, I am trying to boost a lot my culture and a little bit my face. So I can only move these great works to other seaports and stock exchanges. I hope this video guide on industries and corporation will be useful for you. And if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, additional tips, feel free to leave a message in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and see you soon on my next videos. Until then, have a good day. Cheers.